The United States has announced its withdrawal from the United Nations Human Rights Council over what it calls the body's entrenched bias against Israel. Now, the announcement was made by the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, standing alongside the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, at a State Department briefing in Washington, D.C. on Thursday. Now, they denounced the 47-member body whose job it is to oversee human rights and to do something about them eventually. They denounced the body for what they call chronic bias against the regime in Israel. For too long, the Human Rights Council has been a protector of human rights abusers and a cesspool of political bias. Regrettably, it is now clear that our call for reform was not heeded. Human rights abusers continue to serve on and be elected to the Council. The world's most inhumane regimes continue to escape scrutiny, and the Council continues to politicizing and scapegoating of countries with positive human rights records in an attempt to distract from the abusers in their ranks. Therefore, as we said we would do a year ago, if we did not see any progress, the United States is officially withdrawing from the UN Human Rights Council. In doing so, I want to make it crystal clear that this step is not a retreat from human rights commitments. On the contrary, we take this step because our commitment does not allow us to remain a part of a hypocritical and self-serving organization that makes a mockery of human rights. In what is possibly the greatest act of theater that I have ever witnessed in my entire life, they actually accused governments with bad records of human rights trying to get a seat on the UN Human Rights Council to use that as a platform to try to avoid criticisms of their human rights situation. The hypocrisy behind this is so astounding, it is mind-blowing. The United States is the worst human rights abuser in the entire world, bar none. Now there are people who are really bad, like Saudi Arabia, but they do not do what they do on the scale that the United States has. The history of the United States is drenched in more blood than Saudi Arabia could ever hope for. It is completely astounding that the worst criminal country that has ever existed, even exceeding that of the Nazis, the United States, would accuse someone else of doing the very thing that they have done. This is such a big, obvious elephant in the room. It, 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 it blows my mind how, how utterly hypocritical this is. It's just completely unnecessary. That's like walking up to a toddler who's drawing on the wall, who still has the crayon in their hand and still has their hand on the wall, and them saying that they didn't do it. I mean, it's it's that level of. Uh, I, I'm I'm out of descriptive words for that. And their main beef being that they have a, a chronic anti-Israel bias, after repeatedly criticizing Israel for murdering unarmed people, and call that an anti-Israel bias. Israel, the country born out of the genocide of of Arabs out of Muslims they feel that they're being unfairly targeted like they're the council is biased against the people who have been murdering with absolute and complete impunity for 50 plus years it's absolutely it's 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 mind-blowing how absolutely BS this is in, this entire thing is. This is like the the greatest farce of politics that has ever been seen. I mean, I, I I don't even know how to put how how to really put this in words. Israel and the United States are the two like worst criminal empires in the world today, locked in uh, an unholy alliance. And for the United States 
after all the crimes, the hundreds of millions of people that it has killed, have the audacity to claim bias against Israel for the crimes that it is not only committed, it has publicly said that it supports, that there is video of them doing statements by their soldiers bragging about it, statements by the the Israeli public supporting them, to say that criticizing that is an anti-Israel bias is completely unfathomable. It would take somebody of a dishonesty to a degree that would be, it's frankly mind-boggling. But this is, this is the world that we're in. This is the situation in the Middle East. This is the situation that's going on between Israel and the United States and the Arab world. All of these crimes are being committed with complete impunity, and the United States is just completely denying that they happen. It's, it's, it's amazing. This is, this is how bad it is. They can lie like this, and you can call them out on it, day and night. You could show them the video of them doing it. You could show them the video of them supporting it and cheering it on. And they will absolutely still deny it. I mean, this shows that as long as the United States is the world's hegemonic power, a human rights council is pretty much a waste of time. Until something can be done about the United States and Israel you know, nothing, nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to be done any better. The United States has acted completely self-serving on the Human Rights Council. How it even got on the Human Rights Council is, is merely a reflection of how much power it has, not its dedication to human rights. I would be surprised if there was a person in the U.S. government that even knew what the phrase human rights actually meant. And this is one of those instances where it's so astounding What's before us is just, it's simply unbelievable. As long as the United States and Israel continue to exist as they are, there will never be any peace. There will never be any human rights in the Middle East or any other continent around the world as a result of the U.S. And something very seriously needs to be done about both of them. And so long as they're holding the nuclear card, not much can really be done about it. And that's, you know, as I said, that's that's the world we live in today. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm at a loss for words for this. Something has to be done about those two countries. What needs to be done or what will end up being done is up to world history because... I, I, I really don't know what I could say to, to deal, what the world could do to deal with this situation that would be within the confines of international law. So I'm going to have to leave this one up to history to solve for itself. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.